Hello, everyone. It's Sunday, May 13th, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I thought I'd show you a walk around Cheryl's Organic Food Forest on this beautiful, sunny Mother's Day. I moved the hostas plants closer to the gazebo where they get a little shade because it's getting hot now in Texas. And anywhere that you see sprinkles of white powder that is dyed to mesh's earth to um, kill some non-beneficial insects. I put it on at night and before I came in to edit this video, I watered my food forest and rinsed everything off because I'm very concerned about using anything that may damage or harm our beneficial pollinators. You're looking at my food orchard, my fruit orchard right now. My tomatoes are getting really tall. Those are some peanuts right there. And here are all my fruit trees, and I'm holding a persimmon leaf and the beginning of fruit. No, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you how the fruit is uh, developed or how it's developing. And I'm pulling off a couple of leaves that has black spots. I've been treating uh, this tree for the uh, bat fungus. And make sure whenever you pull any leaves off, don't compost them because you don't want to spread that. My research has taught me that that little leaf spot on that persimmon tree doesn't go to the fruit. So I'm thankful for that. And just painting around showing you some more fruit trees. And I've been treating these two peace trees for a fungus and I severely pruned them. It's not the time to prune them, but I went ahead and removed the leaves that were still uh, there because the fungus had just gotten really bad. And right there when you saw when I was pointing to the part that I had scratched off, that was green yesterday, or the day before yesterday. So the tree is still, both of those trees are still alive. That was um, baby, um, sugar baby watermelons. And right here, I, I pointed at, um, gosh, Minnesota Midget, Midget Watermelon. And those are some peppers back there, magnolia tree. And here I removed most of the herbs yesterday and transplanted it to a new raised garden bed made out of blocks. And here are some um, moonflowers, and that is a very small Chinese melon that I'm growing um, in hanging baskets. As you can see, those tomato plants are getting really large. And we're enjoying harvesting uh, a few a day. The oregano is just gorgeous. I'm going to have to pot up them again. I think this will be probably the fourth time 
because they are getting root bound. And you guys remember when I told you I moved my muscadine vines and that's the first evidence that they're doing okay. And I had to have my landscaper to uh, heavily prune a 30 year old crepe myrtle tree because the muscadines on the other side of this garden fence weren't developing leaves and they're doing that now at that more sunshine is allowed inside of the yard without all of those heavy crepe myrtle branches see right across the top that tree was about 20 feet high so we took those down another peach tree i'm getting ready to back up and show you some peaches and I've been talking a lot about my hugo culture in the last couple of days. And every day I add a few more flowers to it. Those were uh, tree collars. I'm beginning to get, lose hope that the canna lilies came back. Um, they're not showing any evidence of life. And I don't want to dig all that dirt up and bury it if they're not going to make it. So I'm going to wait a couple more weeks. And if I don't see any evidence, I'll put them in a compost. Another apple tree. Sugar babies in that whiskey barrel again. Sugar baby watermelons. Apple tree, pear tree, persimmon tree. Another apple tree to the right, a strawberry bed. And those are painted rocks that look like strawberries to deter the birds. Once they pick on that, they'll think all the strawberries are like this. And this one is so beautiful this year. The Utah uh, pomegranates trees. I have two of them and they're loaded with flowers. And they're dropping some of the blooms. I'm hoping this is going to be the year that we get some fruit. Pretty soon I will put organza bags on them once they start developing fruit. And these are uh, brown turkey fig trees that I grew from pencil size cuttings. I up potted them recently. And that, those are two pawpaw trees. I'm not seeing any evidence of life. I ordered those bare root. We shall see, I haven't given up on them yet. And each of my raised beds have a lot of uh, flowers and tomatoes in it. And this is my tea bed. I'm growing a lot of Texas hibiscus. So I drink that tea every day to keep my blood pressure lowered. And chamomile flowers I put here. And of course some zinnias and i think these are just some mere part of me um morning glories that grew in this uh, container that had tulips to die back i think those are more morning glories they sure look like them and all the flowers you see here are edible The tiny Tim tomatoes are running their course there. Those are um, uh, tomatoes uh, from the that were growing in the house, so they're winding down production. And those are my Thompson seedless green grapes, and some more fig trees, of course daylilies and moonflowers, and strawberries. Fusenias. And you're looking at some ground cherries I planted over there. 
Yesterday, I up-potted them, some gladiolas, and those are me Mexican petunias. I think I'm going to put those on the outside of my fence because I heard that they get very, um, they can be very invasive. And that's a barrage. Some people say borage, some people say barrage. One seed made all of those flowers. And here is my banana alley. And yesterday, I planted one of the small fig trees in the banana alley. I'm growing two moosas that are cold weather tolerant and two red Jamaican banana trees. If you're ever wondering if you can put an onion in the ground that has sprouted in your pantry, this is evidence that you can. I planted this last fall. It's gone to seed. I only put it there to deter um, non-beneficial insects because I don't I can't digest onions so I don't plant a lot of them. I can um only digest just a small amount of onions. And look at my corn. This is a rainbow glass assorted corn and I did the two sister thing with the squash growing up the corn. And the corn is almost six feet tall now. And that's a butternut squash. That's my favorite squash. And I'm learning to plant things that I enjoy eating. Now, my privacy fence is about six, is six feet tall. Aren't those beautiful zinnias I planted last January from seeds in the house and under grow lights? If you notice, you don't see the diatomaceous earth around the flowers because I don't want anything to happen to the pollinators. But as I stated previously, all of that was washed off before I even took this camera in the house to edit the video. Now look at that corn. It's up there almost six feet. Wow. It's amazing. You start with one little seed and how much it grows. It's amazing how God has created everything so uniquely. And once you start growing from seeds and realize how inexpensive it is, you'll never want to go back to buying transplants unless you absolutely have to because it's something that you can't get, can't get the seed. And that's the newest addition to our fruit orchard, and that is a a um, orange tree. Actually, it's a uh, tangerine. And those are some of the strawberries that I sliced up, and I got up early this morning and made this beautiful Mother's Day cake, strawberry cake. And that's my mommy. May she rest in peace. She's a beautiful lady. And here I am with my mama when I was 38 years old. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I hope I have inspired you by taking you on a tour of my garden. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.